all right guys so you're welcome to the third in the series for our assembly workflow for this rotary engine and we have the rotary engine already activated here and we go on to assembly in this um, video i'm going to be demonstrating the rocker harm um sub assembly process so i click on place and browse through the files so what i'm going to be looking for is the rocker arm like i said in the previous tutorials that i'll be bringing in the parts all together so um pqr this is the rocker arm this is what i'm looking for and then i also want the rocker arm linkage and yeah that's just it open and i place by clicking once so previously i said that after selecting on the workspace to drop your part model that you have to right click and select cancel but then you could also just click on the escape button on your keyboard to you know relieve the stress of having to click and click on cancel every single time so it serves as a shortcut so i just selected um the escape button i prefer the view to look this way it's always nice looking like this yeah all right so since we already have this the next thing to do is simple which is to make this part to be um grounded so i right click on the parts the rocker arm okay so select grounded and we have that there then i can drag this around it's not properly oriented which um the constraints might be able to do that but i could also select on free rotate and select on the parts and rotate it to the direction i want it to face after doing that i just click out of the circle so the next thing would be to select on the constraints which is this i click on this and the cylindrical construction wall okay so the pop sound is really loud <laughs> and okay so we have it the boats are going in the same direction as you see the arrows here and just like i said in the previous tutorial we can always um, change the orientation of our constraints so we have opposite directions here so if i select on this we have this visible for us to see all right i haven't done this i click on apply and we're done with that i would also um shift this upward just a little bit up escape button on my keyboard i move this upward a little bit i do not want this to um float around so i'm just going to try to constrain this with this part and for me to do that um well so what i'll do is um I go to tools click on measure so i want to know the distance between this face and this face and that is 0 0.181 inches i don't like inches so um that's pretty difficult to understand so i'll just use um, centimeters or millimeters apply and close so measure um this face to this face so we have 4.589 millimeters um that's not bad so we will place a constraint between this face and this at 4.5 all right so i'll go back to assemble constraint 4.5 millimeters i select on this face and select on this face so i come over here to type in my 4.5 just leaving it at 4.5 is going to as it could assume it is in inches so i have to place my millimeters i don't know why it happens that way but it does so um apply 
um, the new relationship conflicts with existing assembly relationships. And um, what are existing assembly relationships are there? Um, let's see. That's pretty loud. Pretty loud. Like, really loud. Alright, so I want this. It doesn't have to be this way. So let's say I make this minus 4.5, okay? And apply. Alright, so this works and I say cancel. So now this is not able to go down anymore, so it's fixed at that 4.5. Oh, that was really loud. <laughs> I'm sorry if that could deafen your ears. Um, anyways, um, so we've done this now and it's pretty much done, but um, we have to introduce a different part which we didn't model, but is contained in the inventor content library. And that would be a knot. You know that while creating this part, the rocker arm linkage, we selected a particular thread style to, for this thread. So there's actually a knot for this. So we come over here and click on place from content center. All right. So the content center is more like a library that contains um, standard tools, cables of all sorts. Um, so all kinds of standard tools that you might use so they are all here but what we need is the nuts so we go to nuts um we need the hexagonal nuts that's this one all right so we are here and we will be looking for the ansi metric m4 by 0 0.5 um but then it is the din is a weird stuff but i kind of did the re research to find this <laughs> it's not like the standards are all in my head so don't be scared it's some kind of research i've done um din en24036 and then i know there are two but you could select on any I think <laughs> so we select on this and say okay and it's going to follow my cursor yep and if you notice that it has um, m3 so I come over here to select on the thread after selecting on the thread once you notice that it's still moving around so what I need to do is to select on the face to mate it with so I want it to rest on this face so i select on this face all right so having done that we have this um window the pop up here and then from this point we can also um modify the knot so if i select on change size i am able to make use of this in adjusting the size so we have the m3 and this is nominal diameter of three millimeters head height and all of this so um we could change it to something else but we stick to the three and i say apply um so you don't have to actually do that um it just depends on i mean from here the software already identified the kind of um threads that we have here so automatically selected m3 and so but if that's not the case for you then you can always add just it okay um so guys let me see okay let's check this out to know how well this was done analyze interference um so this is the first um this is the second part and then okay so a total of one interference was detected with the total volume of this um so the interference type is thread so that's understandable because the thread the teeth of the threads they go into each other so that's pretty much fine and also because um the parts here this thread is cos cosmetic yeah so the part the thread here is cosmetic which means that it's not really threaded but just to 
depicts the fact that the thread up the thread tool was applied to it all right i've not said all of that so we're good and we are able to save this as the rocker arm sub assembly pretty loud rocker arm am i spelling that right sub assembly All right, just to make it similar to all of this. Rocker arm sub assembly and we select and save. All right, guys. So this is the end of this part. This was very, very easy to do. Um, but at least we learned something new. We learned how to pick up parts from the content center and how to adjust the parts. And then we also learned how to measure the distance between two faces um in the assembly workspace and this is where we'll be done with this part i'll see you guys in the next tutorial and also remember if you are yet to subscribe to this channel please do so that you get information when i make new uploads and also keep watching this space